long, long time ago when I saw a picture of my little brother, Donal. And in Ireland, when you make your first communion, you have to wear a full suit, uh, it, which thankfully that's gone now. But at the time you had these uh, eight, nine year old guys in like full uh, dark suit. Look, and then they would be stood in the garden and they would have to look quite serious. And I saw this photograph and I thought, he looks like a like a 10 year old Bond villain. And that idea really tickled me that you would have a Bond villain who's only 10. And it stayed with me for a long time, but I never had anywhere to place him. Uh, but at the time, then years later, I began to write this fairy story as is contracted to all Irish writers. You must at some point write a leprechaun story. And I was trying to think, what can I do with these fairies? Uh, and I thought, well, I'll put them together with the little Bond villain. There's a long tradition uh, going centuries old, millennia even, of people telling stories about the fairies uh, in Ireland and how they live under the ground. And there are, even, there are people st still today who will not, if they are farmers, they will not uh, cut the grass on what we call a fairy fort, which is probably actually a sunken Norman fort. But uh, we believe that they're fairy forts. And people believe very strongly that uh, good luck and bad luck is caused by being uh, disrespecting the fairies. So there's a really strong belief in the fairy culture. And what I wanted to do was update that, uh, update those fairies, bring and uh, reimagine them, reboot the fairies, if you like. When I write a book, the relationship between me and the reader of the book, it, it's in our heads. So I write something that I have an idea about, then the reader reads that and they interpret it. But, but at no point does it enter the real world. Uh, so to see uh, Foul Manor so wonderfully recreated, it's not even recreated, it's reimagined. Uh, it was quite emotional, actually. What I loved about the, the Haven City sets was they obviously, uh, there's an architectural quality to it. So you feel like a, a different culture lives here. This is not a culture we know. We've never seen anything like this before. This doesn't look like Blade Runner at all. It's, you know, which is, I think, the usual criticism of things. It's like Blade Runner. But this doesn't look like that at all. This has an organic feel to it, like a very natural people have lived here for a long time. Yes, they have technology, but they have not abandoned Mother Earth. They live in the earth and they love the earth. And that's really obvious. And there's even stuff, I mean, there's some stuff that could be, uh, could, could be functional, but it also could be artwork. You're not really sure what it is because it's this different race that you don't know anything about. So you're stepping into a new world. Everybody is going to be blown away by it because it's, it's going to be quite funny, I think, especially with people like Josh Gad in there but it's going to be also quite emotional it's dealing with some big themes you have like uh shakespearean actor and director kenneth brown who's bringing those big themes uh with him uh to the story so i would read and i think it's going to be very pacey i think that they, they, it, they want to try and keep up with the pace of the book so i think you're going to go in and you would almost need a seatbelt in the cinema because it's just going to take off uh and you, it'll be like a roller coaster ride of, of, you know, laughter and tears. That's going to look like something, nothing you've ever seen before.